Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, today we're going to cover why macros ain't popular anymore. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's going to be great. Hey, welcome to our 100th podcast. So I'm Jackie Stook and I'm here with Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. And uh, we're looking forward to what are, what are we covering today, Jackie? Uh, why macros ain't popular anymore. Yeah, so so these macros or VBAs or whatever you want to use, um, we don't feel that they're that popular anymore. And I'd say we've, we've done a few lists or a few points as to why we believe it is so. Uh, the first one we have is humans have shifted more to like a short-term focus over at least a long-term focus. It seems as if you're always trying to get the job done here and now. There's not so much focus on, is this job going to come back to me again? Can I somehow optimize how long I use each time I get this uh, task? Um, what do you say, Joe? Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And, and to take a step back again, we, we had talked about the general thing of like, you know, back 20 years ago, like using a, like a VBA macro in Excel was pretty commonplace. Like the, a lot of people could understood how to do them, this and that, and work with them. And nowadays it's really rare. And so we, we, was, we thought it was a fun and interesting thing to, to discuss. Um, and, and to your point, Jackie, um, I think a big part of it is just this – and this is a general theme you're going to see in the next couple points is that people now, everyone is in such a hurry. You got to get stuff done now. And they're not trying to think about, you know, let me invest in myself. Let me spend some time not actually doing the work. Let me work. You know, let me, let me find better ways to work instead of let me get this done now. <laughs> so, yeah. It's right. That, that a lot of programs and stuff like that, like Excel, if, if that's the one you want to go with or Word or whatever, they do have quite a lot of functionality that helps you and that has moved uh, working with words or text or numbers uh, a long way from calculators and typewriters and stuff like that. But um, I felt I was pretty early on in the, uh, in the work area uh, when computers was kind of being introduced into all these jobs and, and different tasks people were doing. And for some reason, this was used to me way more than it is now, which is kind of weird when you think about the technology being newer at the time. Whereas now when it has been more accepted and everybody seems to be using it in one way or another, that I'm not seeing more focus on automating more tasks or having more things happen in a specific automated way instead of people sitting there and doing the same thing over and over. So yeah, I, I think maybe it, it points to the second one here. Yeah, I, I'd even maybe finish on that note of like, simply learning the hotkeys for doing some things like people don't even know those right and then go find they don't even remember the things they do the most often it, it drives me batty but i'm like man i if i'm doing something several times i'm like there must be a hotkey for this thing right so i can bring it up quicker um but yeah so uh yeah in 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 so getting into the second point so um both employees are pressed for more time right to get things done and managers have very specific deadlines and so i know you know, when I worked at TI, um, my boss would have a very clear expectations for me to get certain things done, you know, at a certain time. Um, and also, I just, you know, I, I felt like I had to get stuff done. I didn't have time to kind of learn how to do other things. Um, and, and that was what I had to finally do was to say, you know, I'm going to do it on my own time. I'm going to learn how to do this so I can save myself the time. But um, yeah, both I think managers from their managers up, well, everyone has these expectations, get stuff done right now and, and we'll do that next time. Yeah, no, we'll do that, that'll be great. We'll do that next time, but no one ever does. Yeah, I've seen so many times people not use it, utilizing what a computer can do for them. Uh, they'll be typing a, a long sentence or, or whatever, or a long name for a file or something. 
and they have mistyped one of the words, like maybe the first one, they missed the K or whatever, and they'll backspace the entire thing away and rewrite it. And I'm like, what? Why? Uh, I, I, I loathe typing. So if I have any way of not typing all those words again, I 100% use it. And to me, using here, just moving the cursor to the right location, not even shifting to the mouse or anything, you can use the arrow keys. It's, it's really not hard. And you only use the same amount of types as you would using the backspace, but you wouldn't have to type all of it again. It, it's like, and I see it so often. And I know it's very, very short amounts of time that people are lo use, losing by doing it, but it just adds up. And it's just, that's a small thing. And it's just all over the place with anything. It's like, oh, I missed done, I did that. I Oh, where did that go? And they'll just start over. Um, well, besides the fact they could have a hot string, right? Yeah. For, if it's something they're typing frequently, like just, you know, let's even make it even simpler. But yeah, I, I get entirely what you mean by, by that. Yeah, and, and that's, that's also uh, where we have the third one is companies don't invest in their employees. And, and the same goes for employees don't invest in themselves, right? It's, it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just get it done as, as, or as a manager or as a company. It's, I don't care how you get it done. It's just as long as you keep up to the deadlines and you keep getting it done. Uh, and they'll just, uh, it, it goes to how some companies are doing stuff. Yeah, employees, they're easy to get. doesn't really matter. That they're interchangeable. Them yeah. Having uh, good uh, work methods and stuff like that. And it doesn't, they're, they're a dime a dozen. Let's just pump them for the energy that they have as long as they deliver fast and on point and all that stuff. It doesn't really matter. I can always hire someone else. And employees are like, Oh, they're pushing me so much. Oh, they want me to do all of this. I don't have the time or the mental, um, not tenacity, but room to, to also um, automate or whatever parts of these things that I'm doing. And to me, it's like, that's probably the wrong way of putting it. If, the company is actually allowed the employees to better themselves or, and the employees actually you know, try to take out small pieces of time to help themselves. They'd either make themselves more valuable to the company or the company would make the employees more valuable to themselves. So yeah, there's a lot in investing in what you have. Yeah, I... I... Well, I don't know if I can even add to that. I, I, other than saying, I live that experience. And you, I, I forwarded a couple emails from my bosses at the time. When I would go to automate something, they would question why I was automating it, which is insanity. Um, and, uh, you know, why would you discourage someone from automating something they do all the time? Like, who wants that? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah let alone, and, and part of it is like, do they just not understand it? I don't, I don't know. Do they think it takes more time? I, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's just weird. Um, but, yeah. but both of those, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just getting to why do they discourage uh, automation? And I have felt a few times over it that the not knowing what the automation is. Right you probably don't have uh, your finger on the pulse. If the automation is wrong, everything will be wrong and we'll be sending whatever uh, people to their death or whatever uh, scenario they have in their head. Right? Yeah. It, it's like, mm, it's fair enough to some degree to have, as we have talked about many times over Joe, to have a human in the process you don't right. need it to be 100%. But as soon as you've done it and double-checked it enough times, 
uh, the task is really stationary enough for it to not be. And that's the thing with computers. If it has worked a hundred time, times, the hundred and one time, if the, the input is the same and the output is the one you want is the same, right. the chance of it working once again yep. is astronomical and high. Well, especially when you say compared to a human doing it, right? Yeah. Like that's the real thing is compared to, uh, if anyone's gonna mess it up, a human's gonna mess it up, not the computer. But to your point, you don't, you don't try to automate the entire thing at first. You build in checks and you look at it. And even after you do that, you build in some logic and other things to, to check yourself in case things go wrong, right? Um, there's so many things you could do, but yeah, anyway. Um, and, and both of those, I think, lead into the next point, which really is like people just don't have the skills they used to have. Um, I, I think a lot of people had a lot more knowledge of just using a computer and understanding how computers worked and how Windows was set up and doing advanced stuff. And nowadays, they, which I know from talking to you at work, like, you know, you literally could do the, uh, you know, why don't I Google that for you? Like so many times, right? Because they ask you questions time after time and you're like, did you, did you bother to Google it? Um, but no one even knows how to look up stuff anymore. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah it, I'm, I'm totally baffled by this one because I was in the space when computers became a thing in the workspace, at least in the offices that I've been working in over the last 20 years, it's just been more and more and more. And now everybody is sitting at a desk and working at a computer. Not everybody, get me get, understand what I mean, but everybody in an office is. And for some reason, fewer people seem to understand the computer as well as the one who had them when I started out. So people have had even more years with computers, but have gotten less good at using them. Even though the computers have gotten more convenient and more user-friendly, right. people are using them less advanced or less complexly. I, I don't know how to put that. They're, they're not utilizing the tool at hand as well as they once did, which seems weird. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, it, which I think we'll lead into the next one, which is, it's, it's similar, but it's, it's, uh, it's a little different, is that there's this really, I, I'll say fear for lack of a better term, uh, nobody wants to code. Like the second someone sees there's any sort of coding, whether, I mean, auto hockey, as you know, Jackie, is like one of the easiest languages in the world to, to read and decipher and to learn because it's so straightforward often, not always, but often very clear what you're, oh, I can change that. It's very, but with the second people see codes involved, they, their eyes get glossy, you know, and like the vast majority of people, they, they have no interest. They just say, I have no idea. I don't know how to do that. Like, but did you look? Like, did you bother to look like how clear and easy it is? It's it's crazy. I have uh, in in the, the very room in my office that I work in, there are three people that sit and work and uh, use um, Outlook, Excel, and Word as maybe their three main programs to use eight hours a day, day out and day out, um, day out and day in. And they have been doing so for, I'm just going to say 20 years. That might not be right, but their yeah. job title seems to have been in that exact area. And I've been in the market for about 20 years. So I know that it, uh, that change has been there. And they're still not advanced users of the programs. Yeah, they're, they're really good at turning on uh, show special signs so they can see how many enter uh, times they clicked or how many spaces there are or if something like that is there. They use that quite well to get structure in the end, but actually using the program to help it, they're just using it as an advanced typewriter. They're really not getting much out of it. Um, and to me, that's that's not much productivity boost we've gotten for actually removing ourselves from a typewriter into the computer 
when you think about it. It's, it's like fewer people actually want code or want the advanced features. Yeah. If, uh, I, I think you even wrote that even some programmers don't want to code. Right. They, they want to tell the computer what they want. They want to crack and drop stuff. Uh, which is nice. I've seen some nice examples of that. Um, but it's kind of weird if we move away from it entirely. In 20 years or something like that, if, if nobody understands well, because someone probably needs to do some coding. But if that's the level of it, it, it becomes one of those things that we have talked about in other pro, uh, other podcasts, you know, where we move so far away from the essence of it that if you actually forget, as a race or whatever you would call that, how to use a pen, yeah, then what's the use of paper or the, the skill of writing or whatever, and um, where if we totally move away from how to use a computer, then only by the computer, the AI, the, the stuff we want to do with it really becomes the essential part of it. So yeah. You, you know what, Jackie, I think you just had a really profound thought there in that in a point is we've talked about this other times. People are very afraid in general of AI taking over their jobs, right? Like there's this big fear computers are going to replace people. Um, and time and time again, we actually do see that happen when the humans don't bother to increase their value enough, right? Like, and in, in the, in they expect to get paid more than they're worth. And here's the case in point, which is exactly what you're saying. People aren't bothering to learn how to use a computer well. Um, yeah, you know what? They are going to, those people will be outsourced and, and, and AI will be able to take over because they're not doing anything. They're not adding a lot of value. Um, you know. It's, it's kind of crazy. someone really good at using Word or manipulating documents will be interviewed and a program will be made that uses all of the functionality of stuff like that. Yep. So, so yeah. I, I wanted to have a, a, a little personal story here because I was trying not to laugh when you were mentioning some of the stuff. This guy, this is like 10 years ago when I was working and uh, I thought he was decent on a computer. Now, he was my colleague at, at a corporate America. And I was walking by him and he's at his computer and I hear him go, oh, and I'm like, so I come back. I'm like, what, you know, you need help with something? Oh, and he's like, I got this list of 4,000 rows in Excel. And it had like their first and last name in the same cell. And he wanted just their first name. So he was literally going in and cutting the name manually and pasting it to the other cell, right? And I'm like, you know, and I showed him how to use, I think it was like the split split ta table, no, cells to, to whatever. It doesn't matter, right? But there's a function in, in Excel that autumn does this. What do you want to split on a space? Great. Yeah. You had to fix a few. It was done in about 20 seconds. Um, but the fact that like he, he was doing it manually and he would have kept doing it manually had I not like just asked him what he was doing, right? Like, and I don't think he was, not I don't afraid is not the right word, but um, I don't think he was worried that if he asked me that he appeared stupid. Like I don't think he even thought of like there was a way to do this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It wasn't he was worried like oh god I can't believe I don't know how to do this, but I don't want to ask someone because then I realize I don't know what I'm doing. But um, because uh, anyway, it was to me I'm like wow, like you would really spend and this is a guy that was making you know like at least sixty k a year e easily. Um. <laughs> You, you don't you don't earn enough i'm sorry you earn way too much for doing something like that manually you got to find a better way to do it um yeah and and again i've i've had similar experiences and one of them was something that earned me a promotion where people were reading stuff on one page and then writing it down manually yeah. and then loading the next page and then typing it in manually and right when I saw it, they'd been doing it for days and they needed to do thousands more. I was like, can you, can you show me what you're doing? Because I was just baffled by it really being a necessity for them right. to actually type out what they're seeing and then typing it in again. And, and we currently have not 
the same case, but we have something similar at work right now where if someone has a work order and they need to order um, spare parts for it, uh, the system totally has all of the functionality. But because our company has uh, built in um, a security measure where someone always needs to double check any purchases that the person makes. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually need to take out a lot of the information and put it into an email form and send it to um, this uh, extra step that will then type in that information manually uh, into another form in the same program. So from this program, you're taking the information out into an email, sending it to someone, reading the email and putting it back into another form in the same program. And when I heard that, I was like, so so now we have an entire project of trying to figure out if that can be done better because I just don't like it. It, it can't be right. It's... Uh, and if they keep having to do something like that, we'll, we'll need to make a program for doing it. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think any business, well, let's say, let's say any business with, let's say, 50 employees, <laughs> maybe it's maybe it could be less than that, should have someone like us in a room that just helps everyone else. You know what I mean? That just says, hey, your job is just to, when people have these Monday, you know, but the problem is they won't even know to bring it up, right? So like you act, actively walk around and look at people and shadow what they're doing and go, hey, we could, you know, you do this a lot and, and there's 10 of you doing it all day. Yeah, hey, we can we can streamline this, you know, because um, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. So anyway, hopefully everyone listen to this, you, you know, thankfully you are investing in yourself because you're listening to this and you're learning stuff. Right. So keep at it. Um, in a, a, yeah, auto hockey is an amazing tool. It's not the only tool in the world. There's other great tools, but it's, it's a great one and it can help you out on, on a windows computer. Almost anything you're doing, it can help speed it up. Yeah. All right. Good talking to you, man. Yeah, absolutely. See you soon. Bye. So thanks for listening to the podcast and please remember to comment and let us know what you enjoyed about that. And if you have any questions, you know, add in there cause uh, it's really great to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Five typical steps needed to automate a process. If you like that, make sure you go to pod.theautomator.com and look for it.